and Chris to maybe talk a little bit about that relationship. Welcome, Cody. Hey, Cody. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Can I uh, just jump in here with a thought? Um, because I was listening <laughs> to the quote that you just read, Anthony, um, especially around the psychology. And it's something that Ivana and I have spoken about a lot. I think one of the major misperceptions about the work that is kind of pervasive. And by the way, I had before I worked with Ivana in Australia, what, seven, eight years ago now, eight years ago, was that um, this was a technique of uh, reopening old wounds and traumas that you would then just continually use and recycle in the work. Um, and actually, you know, we've been working together for years now. What, ha what tends to happen is that there are, you know, there are certain things that never go away that tend to be things that come back into the work. But actually, things constantly change and evolve. And through our work together, so many things heal that sometimes you come to the work. You're like, oh, remember that really painful thing that happened to me? <laughs> and, and you know, I, like, I want to use that. I want to, you know, it's like, oh, I can't, you know, that, that through the, the role that we've just done or whatever it happens to be, we've just healed that part. And so there's also a huge growth in who you are as an artist, because you, you actually start to put yourself together. You're not pulling yourself apart. Mm -hmm. um, and as you become healthier and healthier and healthier, you start to realize that things that you initially thought were very black and white become far more complicated. And as Ivana was talking about, for example, guilt around her husband, but also what she was able to give him and these sorts of um, complicated feelings, I will quite often come to the work and say, oh no, I'm, you know, I, I have no feelings about this whatsoever. Like, I'm good with that. I'm not gonna... And then we start talking and I realize, oh, everything is really complicated. Um, and you can love somebody deeply and really fucking hate them and need something from them and um, feel jealous of them and envious of them. And, and this work actually is a way of <laughs> stripping back all of the layers of bullshit that you use to get you through a day but it's the interesting thing that's happening underneath everything that is actually propelling you. It's the unconscious impulses that you're not even necessarily aware of until you start working. Just a thought. No, it's a, a great thought. We got a lot of good speakers here. I just gonna shut up and let you guys talk. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> Just to add to that, what you said, Cody, I think the Chubbuck technique is a denial buster. And it's just so interesting. Mm. Well, I'm writing that down, by the way. <laughs> the denial buster. That's a pretty what denial she, buster. I work with a student and, you know, she'll say, who are you attracted to? And the student might say, oh, I'm not, no, I'm just into my boyfriend. There's nobody else. And she'll say, um, but everyone's got an attraction or a crush somewhere. And this person will be con constantly in denial. And eventually after Ivana works with them for a little while, they're like, well, actually there's that barista <laughs> who I haven't been able to stop thinking about. So, <laughs> I love it because it really, you walk in one way and then after a little, you know, when you explore the work, you do realize you still love that person that you have written off in your life or you miss them or that person that you've had so much hatred towards, you you still miss them holding you in bed and spooning you or it, it, it's so, it really helps you contact all the different sub personalities within you, not just the ones you identify with all the time. I will say, you know, one of the, the things about the complication of it is that what I think a large part of the fear is that what happens is, um, especially when you see a live class of Ivana's and, and you see the, cause I, I remember when I first came to the class just to share a memory thinking, who is this witch with her crystal ball? Like, you know, like <laughs> digging around and trying to figure, you know, I, I was so skeptical and I'm a real skeptic. And I mean, 
you know this funnel i'll come in i'll go no absolutely not moving on <laughs> and you know two sessions later i'll say ah oh, fuck you know that thing about the i think we've got to we got to go there <laughs> and one of the things that you start to realize is that a lot of the fear that people have about the technique is that it starts to uncover things that you've hidden in the fog in your life and then you actually have to start dealing with those things in your life and so people think oh i don't want to i don't want to mess up my life you know everything's together there and it's like well no the problem actually is is that you're hiding things in the fog mm -hmm. and you know if you don't bring it out in the work it's going to consume your life you know unconsciously and it happens time and time and time and time again and so it really is a place and a space where you need to leap in and play with these very complicated feelings and emotions um and ultimately because, it's fun it's ultimately it's fun yeah one of the things that the idea yeah. is if you're not having fun you've made the wrong choices if you're feeling icky you've made the wrong choices if you're not if you're if you're having joy from getting whatever it is you're getting you know using the stuff that's going to propel you to to get whatever it is you want joy is life is too short not to enjoy yourself so if, if you're pumping up all this stuff to be able to like get to those truthful places but then afterwards you're it's sticking like glue it's like oh why would you keep doing that i wouldn't want to be an actor doing i mean I, when i what i teach is let's do this so we can enjoy ourselves let's enjoy um learning let's enjoy exploration of the human nature let's enjoy our, our capacity to um to, to 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 be able to do anything in our fantasy world we can do anything you can kill people in your fantasy world you could um have sex with people you couldn't have in your fantasy world your fantasy world is like all this ability to be able to do things that you can't do in your real life how fun is that you know so so you know everybody everybody on the planet has had a moment where they just were so angry at someone just just wanted to kill that person but in your acting you can actually do it <laughs> so it's like so you be able to get that off your shoulder because and it's holding on all that anger and just pissed off at that person it's just festering inside of you if you're acting and putting it in there it's, it creates catharsis freedom can I ask I, you both to talk? Oh, Cody, did you want to say something? Well, and then I'll let you ask your question, which is, I think that's the, <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that's one of the key elements of our work together is when we sit down, we're kind of like children in a way that we're like, oh my God, oh, that's so messy, you know, oh. <laughs> Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So That's cool exactly if we do this, I'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so be, and, I mean, this and we'll is the part that, out. You know, but also working out to say like, it's kind of a crazy idea, but what do you think about trying this? And you go, oh, I like that. Or this is going to be kind of really kind of dark, but it could be kind of fun. And it's like, okay, I'm in, you know. <laughs> we, we both know when it hits, when, you know, We'll be bandying things about and sometimes it'll be no it's not quite that you know what, what but is it is it not like this your relationship with your mother is it no it's not it's not quite that it's more and then you know i might say it's a little bit like this and you know and we'll keep you know like oh, okay we'll worm our way in and then all of a sudden one of, one of us will say something and we'll both go you know, and it's like, oh, the chills happen. And we're like, oh, and, and I always have that moment of like, oh, no. <laughs> like, like, oh, like, absolutely. We've got to use this because you're, <laughs> it's, it's a real process of on the spot, I think, in, in our working relationship is it's, we're actually on a journey together. And it's, and, you know, it's not just a journey into my psyche it's because that's that's not universal it's a journey into and it's not just the character it's more universal because you you're you're taking a journey into human nature and you realize something that you think feel um or experience 
and then you're it, like instantly you're able to uh, understand wait other people feel this and we don't talk about this mm -hmm. uh, if, if we've discovered this about what i'm feeling about this here other people are experiencing this and then what happens is it's a doorway in the work and so other people and you know and now we'll talk about some of the work that we've done together certainly one of the roles has been Versace where people from all around the world reach out to me and it's very uncomfortable for me it's not something that I enjoy um and they say really nice things about and I didn't expect it and you know the majority of what people say is I didn't kill myself because of this or I I, I realized something about myself because of this and I, I realized that I don't have to kill myself or that I can go on living. And it took me a long time to realize what that was about because in the work that we did together um, on Versace, the, well, do you want to take it, Ivana, the overall objective that we came up with for, for David, I'd like, who- I'd like, I'd like you to come over to your, yourself because it's such an interesting, concept and I, I'll well, jump in right there yeah ostensibly you know that character is um you look at the end of his life and he's you know he's brutally murdered by his ex-lover and of course you think of a person like this fighting all the way up until the moment that they die and trying to escape and trying to get away and trying to and what we came up with was that um David actually wants uh, to earn his death. There's, he has so much shame and so much guilt and so much um, self-hatred. And Andrew is the, the, the serial killer in the piece is the manifestation of all of the things that he hasn't faced in himself that he now has to look down the barrel of the gun mm -hmm. and, and to, knowing that Andrew was going to kill him, but all the way struggling with how he's going to earn that death, that it's, it's, he's not a victim of Andrew's massacre, but rather he's going to be the one that owns that moment when he leaves the face of planet Earth. It's called dying with dignity because it's your choice and you're not a victim anymore. The other thing is really important because when we, you play someone who's, is, 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 is killing or, or being killed is that you have to think in not in terms of put in the grave dead body, think in terms of something energetically that you want to have killed in yourself so you can prosper and move on. So well, you know, without giving personalizations, I'm going to get like of, of Cody's. For example, I would want to kill off the, the need to con continue to have my mother's voice on my shoulder saying that I'm stupid and ugly all the time and making life's decisions off of that voice that continues to be there. So I would have, I'd be, I, I would use my mother's a substitution for, for, um, uh, for Andrew and uh, for the killer. And uh, then I'd want uh, her, the person who caused me to have that voice on my shoulder, I'm gonna goad you to kill me, but killing me equals killing the voice that says I'm stupid and ugly. So that once I'm killed, it becomes like kind of a more of like a release of now I can move on and, and be prosperous because I'm not, I don't have a voice that's stopping me anymore. Or if you're killing someone, I'm gonna kill the, the, the energy of a person that always, um, like for example, I've had someone in a scene, they use, they, they were playing you know, uh, a killer in No Country for Old Men, where they use the energy of uh, wanting to kill off um, the mother of his of his child, his child, this the mother of the child that was not going to let him see his child anymore. So I need to kill off the person energetically, so I can spend time with, so I can have my boy back. You know, so it becomes an energy kill. So then it's all for positive. So this way I can have, enjoy my child and be with my child and not have to, and, or I had one person who used, um, he wanted to kill his mother 
because she was had cancer and it was very painful cancer and he wanted to take her out of her misery. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it's, just, it's interesting, energy kills and energy be kills. You know, so we're t- what we're doing is we're, we're doing something positive in the killing or being killed so that we can, remember this is acting, this is fantasy, this we're, 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 we're doing, we're not really doing anything. All we're doing is creating a reality that allows us to prosper by the choices that we make that we don't want to live by anymore. And we can do that through the choices we make. And the deeper we dig, the more gold you're going to mine, because that's the stuff that the, the, the things that make force us to be brave is the best stuff of all. Because bravery is sexy, bravery, bravery is compelling. Bravery is something that you only have is because you have so much fear. Ying yang of life. It is a true fact. It is the way things operate. One thing has to exist with the other. It has to. You can't know one without the other. Then it just becomes an, 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 an incomprehensible reality. So the idea of earning the right to die, so this way he was goading him when he was saying the things he was saying to push him to do it. But the natural imp- impulse to want to live because our, we, our, our, the human being wants has a survival instinct became this push-pull. I want to kill off the, his personalization thing that he wants to kill off in, his, in himself. And, and, and at the same time, I'm afraid. So pushing through the fear and then getting free, afraid again, then becomes this, this, this mountain of dense, layered, rich emotion. And that's what ended up happening. Things that, that surprised you that would come up because your natural human need to, to survive and then also the need to get past an energy reality that is, um, is, is destroying your ability to succeed in love, succeed in life, succeed in, in, in relationships with family members, whatever. Success doesn't exist about you money. Can, you, you can certainly see that in, you know, I mean, even um, who I was as a person before Versace and who I was as the person after Versace. And, and that's like, you know, one of the main uh, indicators. And you see what happened to my career after Versace and what was happening before, because the thing that we were working with, the personalization of the, you know, the right to earn my death and the things in myself that I needed to kill off, we killed off with David's death. Cody, I want to just um, jump in there if you don't mind. I understand mm. from a career perspective, pre and post, Versace, mm. who were you pre and post as a young man? Uh, that's such a um, hard question to answer. I, I think... Um, what did you have to kill off? I just that, don't. You want to keep that. You may want to keep that private, though. So I just want to just make sure. Yeah, that, yeah. That there's there's parts of it. There's certainly parts of it I want to keep private. But one of the things that I'll, you know, that I'm able to say is that I think that the person that I was before doing Versace and the person that I was after doing Versace, I didn't have. You know, I was the same. Ivana and I are very similar, and in in our histories, and it was just like, you know how did I, I was in a place, how do I just, you know, I just want to be liked. I just need to be liked. I just, you know, here's my power, take my power. How do I, and at the same time, there was this other part of my personality that was like, I'm special. I'm, you know, whatever it was. And so there were these two conflicting parts of myself, this part that really was trying to break through. And this other part of myself that just, you know, the moment that, that, there was a wrong look or I wasn't getting something that I wanted or needed or whatever that was like, please just like me, just like me. And, and that went away, never goes away fully, but that went away after Versace where I, all of a sudden I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know, like this is not, I need to own all of the parts of who I am. Um, And if I can own those parts of myself, then I can 
do interesting work and make interesting choices and, and have a really embodied life. And Ivana will tell you, certainly before that point, I was driven. You know, that's one thing that everybody knew about me. I was driven. I was going to get what I wanted and I was going to work, you know, 24 hours a day to do that. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to Ivana's during Versace and I'm like, don't run the credit card yet. You just have to wait a few more weeks. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get this. I just got to, and I'm like, you know, there are all these plates in the air and I'm, and, but I knew that there was a breakthrough point with the Versace role and it wasn't even about my career, it was about my life. And if, and obviously Kim, you know, we're very good friends and, if you, you know that after Versace, even in my life, I went, oh, wait a minute. I, you know, I, it's okay to, to love yourself and, and to be loved and to have a stable group of friends and to have things that you like and to not throw yourself against a brick wall and destroy yourself and, you know, drive yourself down the drain. Um, and so that was, that was something that really came out of our work together. Um, it was rough, wasn't it? That was rough work. Versace was, it was so much fun, but mm -hmm. man, it was so tough. <laughs> because it was the first time we, like, we really realized that we, we really have to go there on this yeah. one. Because like one of the things I remember, there's one of the things he sees this guy brutally murder this guy like so violently and yet goes on the journey with him. So you have to like say like, why wouldn't you try to run and get away? And I'm just talking, this is a real story. And we're talking real people. So we have to look at why would David want to continue? I mean, there's always a time you could get away. Why not? Why didn't you? So we have to then, we, what we do is we can say, well, maybe he wants it. Maybe that's what he wants. And so then it became really interesting to try to look at that, but it's scary to look at that because we've got to keep remembering we're killing energy resources. We're not killing ourselves. We're not killing another person. We are killing an energy resource that's destroying us. And then it's, you know, and then the fun of the project as well becomes and, and this is a really important point, I think, just about the technique in general. And one of the things that I think I really learned during that particular role, and we've taken into all of the other roles with us, it's not academic. You have to get it out of the world of your, oh, I understand the technique and it's one, two, three, four, five, and this is what it is. And this, oh, I understand the psychology. And I, it doesn't matter how much you understand if you can't embody it. You really need to be able to drop it into your body and you know, it's, it's that, that uh, the moment that you're, you know, you're on set and you can really control everything and you know where the camera is and you know what, and you're, you're, you know, you're just dicing it up. It's just like, you are just given, you know, a technically brilliant performance and there's just nothing in it. You know, it's just, it's, it's technical, but it's uninteresting. And the moment that, you know, you really drop into the kind of work that we do together, your body, it's just, it starts to do really weird things. And it's, it's when you know that you're on it because you're actually embodied and your whole body comes with you into the performance where you, and you find yourself doing things that you no longer have to, you know, pre-plan every single thing. So you strangle the life out of a performance, you get it in, you're, you're, um, allowing behavior. you're allowing impulses. That's why I said you have to put the, so much work in so you can just let it go, step 12, let it go, and then just let your let yourself be impulsive and create and then let, let your body gonna do whatever it's gonna do and never pre-plan how it's supposed to look. I'll share one moment just, just so that it's you know it's it's through the work in in horror story. I played the Antichrist and it was you know it was one of the most fun things I'd ever done. And we, you know, I, I came to the work and we just really, really wanted to inject, you know, like one of the things was I was like, I really want to explore this, that sexual part of myself that I've, I've locked off. And, you know, I really want to go into the, the dark corners of it, not the PG, you know, uh, Playboy magazine, but the, you know, I really want to get in there and explore uh, this. And 
there's this scene with Sarah Paulson at the start, you know, the start of our relationship where I strip her naked in this scene and she's got this really deformed hump and everything. And I remember looking at it thinking, oh, I'm going to humiliate her and I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And Ivana was like, no, I think that it's so sexy. Like, I think you, like you need to get up there and you need to, you need to touch the hump and you need to, you know, really, like really get in there and like fuck the deformity, you know, like just like make love to the deformity on her back. And, and the moment that she turns around, you know, and this is what I mean, there was a moment that came because of the work that we'd done that we hadn't planned, which was, so I'm doing all this with Sarah and she turned around because like ne neither of us, she didn't expect what I was gonna be doing. And she turned around in the take so that we were face to face. And as the lines were about to end, she went to kiss me and the impulse instantly was no and to pull away and the humiliation that she felt as a human being because her body had responded to what I was doing. And when the no came, we were both in the reality of the scene and like the director called cut after it was done. And we, both of us instantly started hysterically laughing for like five minutes because we both realized that we were on the wave you know what i mean it was like we were both surfing the wave and we'd surfed it all the way up until this moment and then the director had an idea of how the scene should go in his head so we had to do it all these different ways and of course the take that they used was that take because <laughs> this you're not going to get any better than that you know what i mean that's so and now the good stuff that's for sure ivana just in life, um, what's been the hardest lesson for you to learn? Mm. I really try to make life be about not thinking of it as hard or easy, but just, just see, seeing anything that seems problematic as an opportunity to, 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 to explore it. I, I just, I just don't see life in terms of hard. Let me so, rephrase it. What's been the biggest opportunity for you to learn? Having a husband that had a disease I didn't understand. You said something before, which I thought was very touching. Um, mm. My father was an alcoholic and I used to go to Al-Anon and we've spoken about Al-Anon. And you were very, very clear to say, basically it wasn't him, this was the disease. Mm -hmm. to separate that and in the very beginning you spoke about a love story and the dimension of a love story so you had a love story with him didn't you for many years in the beginning and that's the, 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 the most difficult thing is because if I can understand something and then I can make choices about what I need to do but because it was something that it wasn't, it didn't come with the package. You know, it was 22 years of pretty amazing relationships. That's a long time, 22 years of amazing. And then when it went down, it started going down pretty fast, you know? So, uh, and I just don't understand the disease. And I, and, and, and through trying to go to couples therapy, trying to get into rehab, trying to do interventions, trying to do like all the things one does with that sort of thing and realizing he made a choice that maybe life wasn't the choice he wanted to make. And I couldn't, and, and I guess maybe the most difficult part for me, it actually wasn't difficult. I, I, I just don't think in terms of that, but I think the most interesting part to me was being, is allowing him his choice to not live, knowing that's where he was going. We've only got about five minutes. There's something that you shared with me once, which I thought was very beautiful about really in a sense, something that motivates you. And it was relation in relationship to your daughter, Claire, mm -hmm. and how you wished for her to perceive you versus around the way perhaps you perceived yeah. your mother. Can you just share that, Ivana? I would love to share that. I think that's really beautiful 
one of the things that I never, because my mother was so mean and, and I, and, and I just never respected her. I always respected my father like too much and her with none. And so my big concern when I, when I found out I was pregnant and the doctor said before I was, was still, when she was still in my belly, um, that she, uh, that she was going to be a she. And I wanted a boy because I didn't want to have me look at, like basically her becoming me looking at me the way I looked at my mother. And so um, she, what was so important to me was, was not the first time that she said, I love you, mommy, or even mommy. The first time she said, I want to be just like you, mommy. And it was just like, that was just meant the world to me because I just, and to me, if you want to talk about creation, what the most important creation there is, and why sex is such an important creation, such an important part of our work, is because sex isn't sex. It's what sex is, is it's the ability to create life. And that's why it's important to bring in all the elements in your work, your heart, your intellect, your, your guts, and your sexuality because it's a very powerful energy. All those energies are very important energies. And I, I'm talking in terms of science. I'm not talking in terms of bumbo jumbo, airy fairy stuff. Mm -hmm. Again, our bodies are mostly are two thirds water. We are based on, on electrical currents that create our behaviors that create all, everything that happens in our, our bodies, our thoughts, our subconscious, everything, everything is based in electricity. And so the thing is that uh, I, it, that's why we have to always like, take that we are, we are um, the most lucky people on the planet that we have the ability to understand and art from the place that art is to disturb sensibilities, to make people think, to make people change their minds, to make people care. understand better who they are. What? Care, to make people care. To make people care, to make people understand, to make people um, feel that whatever dreams that they have I don't care what anybody says. You're not pretty enough. You're too old. You're too young. You're too, too fat or too small or you're crippled or whatever it is that you feel that it gets in your way or all the people who just told you is never going to happen for you. It's like this is the, the artist's way really is that anything's possible within your art and pursuing your art. Ivana, thank you so much for that, um, for having utilized your life and all that life presented to you in such an empowered way and a very positive way. The effect, there is a ripple of that to us all. I'm very grateful to the relationships I have with the three of you. They mm -hmm. are very meaningful relationships in my life and I'm grateful to you all. Um, we're going to have part two of this series in June, the 20th of June. It will start at 10 o'clock in the morning, Melbourne time, 5 p.m. Los Angeles time. Um, Anthony Wong will be with us, as will Toddy Goldsmith. Two actors, it's an interactive opportunity with Havana and the auditors watching. So you can get an experience from the comfort of your own homes just about some of these exercises. And then we'll see the application of that work to a scene from No Country for Old Men, the feature film. Ooh. So um, thank you. You are in our thoughts and prayers, Ivana. May the opportunities keep coming for growth and possibility. Mm -hmm. And you are much beloved here in Australia by us all. Well, I just want to end with one sentence. Let's empower the world through the arts. A very good sentiment to end on. Thank you for the contribution you all make. 
Love to you all and thank you to yeah, everybody yeah. who watched. Thank you. Thank you. For everything, you guys, all of you. I love you. Love you. <laughs> love you. Bye bye. Much love to you all. Bye bye. bye, -bye.